Hi, my name is Peter Fisk. You know, I believe that business is the best, probably the most powerful platform for change in the world today. But that requires that business needs a new code for how it operates. And it also means that business leaders need to have the courage to step up, to reimagine how they work and to create a better future for their organizations, but also for society and the world. So let's start with spider silk. You know, Stella McCartney, the British fashion designer, she searches the worlds for the most luxurious fabrics she can find anywhere. There's actually only 31 different fabrics in the world today, and the most recent was created almost 80 years ago at the end of the, of the last World War. Polyester makes 60% of the world's clothing today, carbon-derived and non-biodegradable. Fashion is actually the second most polluting industry in the world today. So Stella looked for something better, and she found it in a small town, Emeryville, in California, and a biotechnology company called Bold Threads. And Dan Wiedmeyer and his team there, what they've done is they've looked across the world for nature and how they can replicate it in new and better ways. What they did was look at spiders and the silk which they produce, and what is the protein which they could synthesize in an artificial way from that. They took that uh, artificially produced uh, protein, they mixed it with yeast and sugar and water, and from it created new beautiful silk threads which were as good as spiders made themselves. Incredibly high tensile strength, but incredibly soft at the same time and biodegradable. From that now, Cosmetics to the most beautiful fashions are created, including Stella McCartney's latest designs for Adidas. But if we step back one moment, we see a world which is on fire. You know, global contagions, rampant wildfires, huge social inequality, and a climate crisis. At the same time for business, we see demanding consumers with ever higher expectations and aspirations. We see disruptive technologies and we see increasing uncertainty and shocks. And we also see stagnant growth. How do organizations move forwards in better ways? You know, think about some of the statistics. The IPCC says that carbon dioxide levels need to fall by 45% from their 2010 levels by 2030, if we have any chance of averting fundamental climate crisis. Think about inequality. 26 people now have as much wealth as 3.8 billion people across the world, according to Credit Suisse. And think about capitalism itself. You know, 56% of people, according to Edelman, say that it, capitalism does more harm than good. So how can business be the best, the most powerful platform for change? How can it solve these huge problems? Well, if you think about the assets which business has, you know, it has these enormous brands which are, you know, admired and uh, desired by people across the world. It has huge customer bases, huge employee bases. So how could it actually use all of that system of consumption and growth uh, commercially to actually make the world better at the same time? How can we create fantastic products which are luxurious and desirable, but they're actually better for the world at the same time and people will, will desire them, want them, pay money for them? And how can we use these new technologies which we have to actually solve some of the problems which governments can't solve themselves. You know, here are some of the changes which have happened recently. So we are making a start. You know, those sustainable development goals, which were launched in 2016, they're now used by many businesses to guide their priorities. Cemex, for example, the Mexican cement company, uses the 17 goals as a way of saying, what are the things we need to do short-term and long-term as our most important strategic priorities, both for profitability but also to achieve our higher purpose. And indeed, Larry Fink from BlackRock, he said in 2018 that he will only invest in companies if they can demonstrate a tangible purpose for society beyond making profits. 
Tesla is a great example of that. You know, Tesla recently became the largest car company in the world, um, according to its market capitalization. But Tesla is actually much more than a car company. It defines its purpose as accelerating the transition to clean energy. In 2019, we had the Business Roundtable, the world's largest kind of companies coming together and saying, we believe in doing business for stakeholders, not just shareholders, and a more equitable sharing of the value which companies create. Danone, for example, the dairy company, it said, we want to step up and be more than a food company. Actually, our best foods make people healthier. So why aren't we a health company? And that's what Emmanuel Faber, the CEO, declared recently. So as a health company, how can they do much more for their people? And every single brand is now called a manifesto brand, where it does good, does good for people, first of all, as well as being a successful commercial entity. And in 2020, the World Economic Forum said, this is the moment. This is the moment when we truly need a great reset in the way businesses think and the way, way in which they act for the world. So we're kind of at this historic crossroads where businesses are realizing it's not just about short-term results. It's not just about making products at the cheapest cost. And it's not just about satisfying customer demand in any way. It's about long-term sustainable growth, which is profitable, but it's also purposeful at the same time. So there's some great companies I see across the world who are really following that new mantra. You know, look at Chobani, the Greek yogurt company, for example, developed by the Turkish guy Hamdi Ulukaya. You know, he says that he's the anti-CEO. What he means by that is that he's happy to make fantastic yogurts and for them to be profitable. But actually all of his profits, which he ultimately makes, and all of his wealth he makes too, he will give away to the immigrants of the world. Or take Selena, a beautiful company from Panama, which has 46 different locations around the world where you can go and stay in a fantastic vacation, but you can also do good work for the local community at the same time. Or go to Spain and you meet Javier Goyanesh. He's the founder of a great company called EcoAlf. It turns waste into beautiful clothing. So 80 plastic bottles, for example, is what it takes to create a new insulated jacket from EcoAlf. Or take Lanzatech, made by the British guy, Sean Simpson. It captures carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and turns it into renewable energy. Or Jason Ballard's Icon Company, that has the world's largest 3D printer. And it uses that to actually reproduce new homes for people either refugees or people who are struck by natural disasters. And he can build a new home in 24 hours, costing $4,000. Just imagine that. Or look into Europe, Too Good To Go is a Danish company created in 2015, which now has 27 million users who are making sure that no food from any store ever goes to waste. So doing good creates better business. You know, we have lots and lots of examples of how products can actually be better when you actually think about creating purpose as well as profitable solutions. You know, I myself, I've been wearing Nike Flyknit running shoes for the last 10 years. You know, that Flyknit technology as opposed to cutting a piece of fabric and then having bits of waste which go to the side, that Flyknit technology which kind of knits the upper of the running shoe allows you to have no waste, so zero waste, but it also creates a more comfortable and lighter shoe at the same time. We've talked about spider silk, you know, which is a great story, the holy grail of fashion. Another one which I love is the sizzling burger story of Patrick Brown. You know, when he was 56 years old, he's a genetics professor at Stanford University, he decided that all of the great stuff he was doing in academia was not really having an impact on the world. So he took a sabbatical and he never went back actually. And a year later, he created Impossible Foods. Impossible Foods, as now we all know, creates the Impossible Burger. You know, they're on a mission to eliminate animal-based foods from the world. So what he set out to do was, yes, to create 
vegetable based products or vegan based products which are similar to the animal based foods but what he realized that people would only buy them is if if they were as good or perhaps even better than the animal alternative so he went about looking at how could he create an impossible burger which had the sizzle which you would get from meat of the white which had the blood dripping from it as you cooked it on the on the barbecue it smelt like meat and it tasted fantastic at the same time so what he really realized that it wasn't people who already understood understood that they needed to change the world but it was all those people who continued to eat meat who he needed to change the minds and the hearts of and today the impossible burger is incredibly successful it uses 95% less land than its meat alternative 74% less water and 87% less emissions yes yeah, so saving our planet saving our planet lifting people out of poverty and advancing economic growth those three things they're actually all the same thing and they're all the same fight they were the words of ban ki moon recently and actually you know the un recently said that if we look at those 17 sustainable goals and if businesses could really put all of their efforts and all of their assets together to look at how can we achieve those goals it could actually be a 12 trillion dollar opportunity for business growth so we live in this incredible time. Yes, we have challenges like COVID-19, but we also have the fourth industrial revolution at the same time. These incredible technologies. We have more change which is coming at us, which we can seize the opportunities of. More change in the next 10 years than the last 250 years. You know, I truly think that business, business is the best platform for change. It can change, it can seize the best opportunities, and it can do things in new and better ways. You know, we need to embrace all of those big, huge challenges to think about how can we drive more enlightened progress? You know, now is the time. Now is the time when we need to step up. Now is the time for a new type of capitalism, if you like. Purpose is just a start. Purpose-driven companies outperform others by 42%. You know, they attract more customers, they attract the best talent, they attract more investment. They can make faster decisions. They can innovate faster, taking new ideas to market. And actually, people will pay more for them as well. The real challenge is to get over the fact that these things are a paradox, that we can either do good for the world or we can make money, that you can have purpose or profit. You know, I actually think the paradox is a possibility when we combine them. How can you combine the new technologies with a better solution for humanity? How can you source and replenish at the same time? How can you give more access, be it education or be it in terms of new products to people, but also have exclusivity and luxury at the same time? How can you have equality and wealth? How can you combine short-term benefits and long-term benefits at the same time? You know, purpose and profit, they're not a trade-off. There is not a paradox. We can actually do both. And stories like the spider silk and the sizzling burgers are two great examples as to how you can do something better for the world, but you can do better for customers and for business at the same time. So now is the time when business leaders need to find a new code for their success.